No, we got plenty of time. New, 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 new. I'm thinking new, 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 new. All right. New, new, new. I'm thinking new, new. Ready? New, 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 new. Yeah. Let's start it off. We got a book. This is the third volume of the Make an Encyclopedia for Electronic Components. This is by far the most popular electronics component, electronics book. I mean, I think Make talked about this as their best-selling book of all time. Um, mm -hmm. This is a really beautiful book with um, gorgeous color photos of all sorts of different components. So um, the three volumes together um, basically teach you everything about what components are, when you'd want to use them. If you're wondering, like, how do I measure location or temperature or pressure or motion, this covers all of them. And, like, sensors are the most interesting things that you can do with electronics. I think I love sensors. And so, like, you can see there's gas sensors and temperature sensors and motion sensors and magnetic sensors and light sensors and color sensors and IR sensors and tilt sensors and rotation and potentiometer, all of these different ones. Um, this book covers all of those components and um, you'll get lots of ideas by looking at what you can do to interact with the world by just flipping through. Look at all the sensors, it gives example code and, and uh, things that can go wrong, things that it does really well, it, it, just all the stuff that you want to learn to get experience with um, these electronic components. And so there's three volumes. I don't remember the other two volumes off the top of my head, but um, I would, I love, I, we carry all three of them and they're all great. And Charles Platt and Frederick Jensen do an excellent job. Um, yeah. Trust me, we get a lot of books coming our way to carry and we don't carry um, most of them. About Only about one out of five books we actually Less than up, that. Or ten, one out of ten. You don't even see, I know that you don't even see the ones that okay. you the don't one, see. The, of the ones you don't see the ones me. you don't see. Yeah, so half of them don't even make it to me and then I review them, but um, they have to be really something special for me to carry and, and this is one of my suggestions. Very handy, especially if you have the um, other books, not, not necessarily by Charles Platt, but by Simon Monk and also the... Um, you know, amateur electronics books. Mm -hmm. This is a great addition. Been very modern. It's very up to date. All right. Okay. So um, next up, we got some heat sinks. These are mini heat sinks. We put large heat sinks in the store, but these are uh, handy for Raspberry Pi computers, Raspberry Pi uh, threes in particular. Although you could use them with the Raspberry Pi two. The tall heat sink we had was very tall and, and gave you about twenty percent boost. Um, these give you about, I think, a 3 or 5%, and then this one gives you, I think, about a 10% boosted speed when running it at full speed, all four yeah. processors. The Pi 3 has a clocking system that will reduce the clock speed based on um, how much you're using the processor. So if you're doing a lot of computation, a lot of graphics work that uses the processors, you're crunching numbers, you're doing encryption, you're doing a YouTube video decoding, whatever, the four processors will start to heat up and um, they actually can, not overheat, but they can get to 80 degrees C at which point the processor will automatically reduce the temperature, uh, sorry, will reduce the clock speed to keep it under the temperature. That's something that people who use computers like PCs are used to, you know, you can overclock and you have to cool it down if you want to overclock it. Um, again, you will not damage your Pi 3 if it, uh, you try to push the processors, it'll just always degrade the clock speed. But if you want to keep getting that high clock speed, a heat sink helps. So these are smaller. They're not gonna give you as good of a performance boost as the big heat sink or a fan, but they're low cost, they're small, and you can fit hats on top of them, um, yeah. which is a problem with the big heat sink. It's very tall. Low profile. Low okay. profile. All right, uh, and next up, uh, this is kind of cool. I like that you got these in the store. Neopixel. By popular depend, demand, we have had these NeoPixels in stock as 10 packs. We now have them as 100 packs on a strip. And so if you're um, making a project that uses a lot of NeoPixels and you just want 100 of them, uh, we has them. And these are the, uh, these are SK6822s, I think is the part number, which are compatible with the World Semi WS2812. These have a slightly better yield, we found, when reflowing, so we like these a little bit more. Um, Code-wise, temperature-wise, shape-wise, pin-wise, they're identical. Um, you know, we get them in reels, we cut them into hundreds, uh, put them in a uh, Ziploc yeah. bag, and you're ready to rock. So these are hundred strips. Okay. And then, um, almost at the end. This is a pack of the Pi Zero plus the Pi Zero camera cable and a Pi Noir camera. So if you want to do um, IR photography, 
or photosynthesis detection or night photography. Uh, this pack is, uh, you get the latest camera plus a cable plus the Pi Zero, you can make your camera project come to life. Okay, and then last up this week. And finally, we have uh, this very handy Wi-Fi hub. So this is really useful for the Pi Zero in particular or the Pi A+, but also for the BeagleBone um, Black or other single board computers that have a USB port but do not have onboard Wi-Fi, or if you just want like three USB ports and also you want internet connectivity. So this comes with a Realtek uh, RTL8188EU, which is uh, Linux supported, Windows supported, Mac supported. It's a very, very common chipset. Um, and the Wi-Fi, it's basically there's a USB port with a Wi-Fi dongle soldered in. And then you also get three USB ports as well. So you get a hub plus Wi-Fi. So it's kind of handy if you just want an all-in-one thing. This is, this is great for any kind of single board computer project. I have one good question, I think, and then one terrible question. Ooh, okay. The first question, and this is from, uh, Tynan is because uh, I'm going to ask it. I have a terrible one. The, mm -hmm. the community has good ones. Um, is the Wi-Fi hub like the Ethernet hub? Does it consume power even when it's not being used? Yes. I mean, it will. It will always use some power because okay. there's a hub. It won't use nearly as much as Ethernet. It'll okay. use I think maybe like 30 to 50 milliamps. But Ethernet is like excessive. Ethernet because it has these big coils and like a lot of. Um, there's just a lot of power that's lost in Ethernet. Just I, actually, I'm not sure exactly why. I think it's the drive strength, and it's constantly listening for packets and then mm. filtering them. Um, maybe that's why. But Ethernet it does draw quite a bit, 200 plus milliamps. Wi-Fi actually not as much, ironically. Okay. Um, one more good question mm -hmm. um, the, for this. Is the hub compatible with the Pi Zero 1.3? It is if you use an on-the-go adapter. If you need a little on-the-go adapter thingy, um, it doesn't come with the cable right to plug in, but if you have the adapter, I tested it on a, on a Raspberry okay. Pi. Can I ask my terrible question? Yeah, yeah. Okay, when you plug this in to a Pi, can you then plug in a USB to Ethernet and also have Ethernet too? Could yeah. You, you could do both. You could. You could put, you I could. I mean, that's terrible, but you could. <laughs> See, I said it's going to no, be no, you could, No, you could, yeah, you could, you could plug an Ethernet adapter, or you could plug a Wi-Fi adapter into the Ethernet hub, oh. so you can make like a little... Would it could you pl could you plug in and have two Ethernets? Yeah, sure. So you could have like bunch of you could you could take a if you can power it. Yeah. So you could take a Pi Zero and then a USB to Wi-Fi and then you can put in two USB to Ethernets and do some type of weirdo proxy thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can make a little uh, onion pie. Yeah, you can make a little onion pie. That's yeah. what I was. Okay, yeah. all right. Thus concludes the bad idea. Segment. I mean, if you if you do the math though, it's like you should just get a Pi Three. Because the Pi 3 has built-in Wi-Fi. Right, but this is going to look way weirder. It does. Okay. All right. And guess what, Lydia? That's it. That's the new products for you. That's it. Yay. Yay.